So first of all, looking at these two equations, I'm writing in a Cartesian equation, which means I'm combining X and Y to create one equation, el eliminating the T parameter. So there are two red lights or two things that we cannot do. One is take the square root of a negative number and the other one is divide by zero. Do we have any one of those issues in these two original functions? So do I have a square root? No. Do I have an X in the denominator or a T in the denominator? So I don't have any issues with my original equation. So I kind of like to think of these two as the parents. And when I create my equation, it's going to also have the same domain as parents. So if there is an issue with X or Y, the child or, this, or my new equation is also going to have those same restrictions, if I have a restriction. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Step number one is to solve for T. You can use X or Y to solve for T. So I'm going to use X. Solve that for t, and you get x divided by negative 3 equals t. So now we're going to take that and substitute it in my y equation for t. So my equation becomes y equals something squared plus 2. And the something is the negative uh, is the x divided by negative 3 so in order to square a fraction you square the numerator and the denominator separately so you have y equals x squared over 9 plus 2 you could also write that as 1 9th x squared plus 2 So there's two different ways you can write your equation. So remember, I didn't have any restrictions. So this original one had a domain of all real numbers. X did, and my Y has a domain of all real numbers. And when I'm looking at this equation, my Cartesian equation, I still don't have any red lights. So my domain is still going to remain all real numbers. So step number one is solve for T. Step number two is substitute. Step number three is solve for Y and write the domain. So this would be my final answer. Now you don't always have to take the X parameter to solve for t, you can also take the y parameter, solve for t, and substitute it into x. So I want to do the next question just a little differently so we can see what that would look like. So what I want to do, because my y function is not as complex as my x function, is I'm actually going to start with the y function. So let's take the y function and solve that for t, which is just going to give me y divided by 4 equals t. So now I can take that and substitute it in for t in my x equation. So I have y equals, or not y, sorry, x equals t squared minus 5. So let's go ahead and put that y over 4. Put that in. Square that fraction. So x equals y squared over 16 minus 5. So because I chose 
to start with the y and substitute that into x, I do need to solve this equation for y. So let's go ahead and solve that equation for y. So what do I need to do to solve this for y? Any ideas how it would solve for y? Subtract the 5 or add the 5? Okay, so let's add 5 to both sides. And that's going to give you x plus 5 equals y squared divided by 16. The next thing I would do is get rid of the 16. And if it's being divided by 16, then I would multiply both sides by 16. So let's multiply both sides by 16. And then that is going to give me sixteen times x plus five equals y squared. And from here we got a couple of options. I'm going to show you a couple different ways that we could proceed from here. Um, you don't because I have a perfect square. I would probably uh, I wouldn't distribute that sixteen because when I take the square root, it's going to become a four. So what I would do, if we don't distribute it, is I would just take the square root, but I'm taking the square root of each piece individually. Hold on, let me, let me, um, let me scooch this over a little bit. Because that 16 right now is separate from that x plus five. So if I take the square root, each one is being square rooted individually. So the square root of 16 is a four. And then that X plus five is going to stay. And that becomes Y. We need to add the plus or minus whenever you take the square root. So that would be my, that would be my um, equation. And I wanna rewrite it because I don't like the Y to be on the right. A little OCD I guess okay so looking at my original equations I didn't have any issues but now I do have an issue so I have an X under a square root so I need to write the domain for this function so this is my function and my restriction says you cannot take the square root of a negative so I want you to take this, what's underneath your square root, make that greater than or equal to zero and solve that for x. And then write your domain in interval notation. So take what's under your square root, that has to be a number greater than or equal to zero. It cannot be zero, I'm sorry, it can be zero, but it cannot be less than zero. So you end up getting x is greater than or equal to negative 5. And then how do you write that in interval notation, though? Yep, so negative 5, comma, infinity. So does negative 5 get a bracket or a parenthesis? And does, parent does the infinity get a parenthesis or a bracket? All right. That is your domain. So both of these together has to be included in your final answer. I need the function and I need to know the domain of that function. So now the next one is where it gets a little bit more complicated. It's our first one that I would say is kind of difficult because we're starting with two equations that both have red lights. So when we look at C together, X is already starting with domain restrictions, and so does Y. So before we start solving and substituting, let's write the domain for X in the domain of Y. So what would the domain be for this function? T, T definitely has a restriction. So take what's underneath your square root, 
and that has to be greater than or equal to zero, which means that T has to be greater than or equal to negative four. So I'm just gonna keep that to the side because we have to, we kind of have to, because when we create an equation, all of the issues or restrictions from X and Y are also carried into the new equation. So T has to be greater than negative four and we also know that in the second one, that t could not be zero. So let's just keep that in mind, that when we write our domain for our final equation, we have to include both of those restrictions. All right, so now let's go ahead and get started. Um, it's kind of up to us if we want to take the x function and solve for t or the y function. And I think I want to do the X function for this one. Now, when you're doing it on your test, your skills check Friday, your test, which is like May 5th, I believe, you can decide which one you want to solve and substitute. And you will get the same answer. So, um, so if X equals the square root of T plus four, let's go ahead and solve that for T. So my first step would be to square both sides to eliminate the square root. So that would be x squared equals t plus four. And then I'm going to subtract four from both sides. which is going to give me x squared minus four equals t. Okay, so now let's do our substitution. So I'm gonna substitute this in for t. So my equation becomes y equals one divided by, and then it's the x squared minus four. So that's actually my equation. This is my equation. But now we need to start working on the domain. So let's write our domain. So the first thing we need to do, if I take this x squared minus four and I factor it down to find our domain, that would factor down to x plus two and x minus two. And when you set them both equal to zero, x cannot equal negative two and x can also not equal positive two. So let's look at all of these. We gotta take all four of these restrictions. So x cannot equal negative two, x cannot equal positive two. Because of this issue here, it cannot equal zero, we need to include that. And it has to be greater than or equal to negative four. So I need to take all of these issues and write a domain. And I like to put it on a number line. So let's put it on a number line. So we have negative four, negative two, we have zero and we have two. Now, because of this one, it has to be greater than negative four. So I'm not looking at any numbers less than negative four. So my, ne my number line actually is going to begin at negative four. It doesn't begin at negative infinity. So that's a closed circle because it can actually equal negative four, that's okay. It cannot equal negative two, it cannot equal zero, and it cannot equal two. So when I write my domain, looking at my number line, I'm starting at negative four. I'm gonna write it at the top of the page because it's kind of a long domain. I'll write it in red. Oh no, I'll write it in black. Okay, so my domain starts at negative four. So that has a bracket. It can't go that long. It has to, 
travel until it hits the next issue, which is negative two. So negative four to negative two. It cannot equal negative two, so that's going to have a parentheses on it. Union, then it picks up at negative two and goes to zero. There's another break. And then it goes from zero to positive two. There's another break. And then it goes from two to infinity. So I guess the question is not really complicated, it's the domain. So I'm gonna give you a chance to take notes over that. And the part that I have highlighted in pink, your domain and your equation. All right, so for this last equation this one it has a lot of issues also so again oops wrong thing okay so if I look at this one because I have does anyone know what what the domain would be of this one because this has a square root in our denominator what would that be t has to what not equal zero and what else did you say? I didn't hear the second part. What would be your last one? I don't know. You're whispering. I can't hear you. <laughs> it cannot be less than zero, and it cannot be zero. So it would be T has to be greater than zero. So instead of it being greater than and equal to zero, because it's in our denominator, it just has to be positive numbers and we cannot use zero. So that's the restriction or the, yeah, that's the restriction I'm inheriting from X. Because of this T in my denominator, T cannot equal zero. But this is actually already covered in this restriction because we're not using zero. Does that make sense? We already decided with the X function that we weren't using zero. Okay, so now let's go ahead and get started. So, now that we know that, we know that our domain, as of right now, this is our domain. Now we're going to create an equation to see what we end up with after we combine these together. But right now, t is greater than zero is my domain. All right, so let's go ahead and solve for t. So I have x equals... So I have x equals one over the square root of t. And I think kids, when I put this over one, sometimes that helps you all think about, oh, how do I go about doing this? So if you have a fraction on one side, what I have found as a teacher is that students are a little bit more confident when they see a fraction on both sides because they automatically think about the butterfly method. So I'm going to solve for t. So I'm cross multiplying. So x times the square root of t equals one times one, which is one. And then I'm going to divide both sides by x, which is going to give me the square root of t equals one over x. And then lastly, I'm going to square both sides. And when you have a fraction, you're squaring top and bottom. So this is what you get. T equals 1 over x squared. So that's my parameter. And I'm going to substitute that into my y function. But notice that y has t in two places. So I have to take this and put it in both places. I have to put it here and I have to put it here. So let's go ahead and start that. So I have y equals, and then I'm putting that one over x squared because there's two different places where I have t. So I have to put it in both places. <clears throat> 
So now we got some algebra. This is where I get a little nervous. We have to add these together. We need a common denominator. So how do I rewrite the number one so that it has a denominator of x squared? Did everybody hear, Hazel? X squared over x squared? So I'm gonna write this as y equals, and then it's one over x squared plus x squared over x squared. And that's divided by one over x squared. All right, so we have y equals, now I'm gonna break this fraction apart. So I have one plus x squared divided by x squared and that's being divided by my denominator. So this is a complex fraction because you have a fraction being divided by a fraction. And the only reason why we like to write it with a common denominator is so I can bring this together and write it as one fraction. So when you divide fractions, you do keep change flip. So that is going to become y equals one plus x squared over x squared times x squared over one. And what's gonna happen with my x squareds? They cancel out. So my actual equation is just y equals one plus x squared. So this is my equation. which my equation in itself doesn't have any red lights. But because of x and y, I inherited the domain of x. So my domain is x is greater than zero, which will be written as parentheses zero to infinity. So we don't have any brackets in our domain. And that is it. For that last one, I believe that you can do it without a calculator. I don't know if you believe you can do it, but I believe you can do it. Like in my heart, I know you know two times two. I know you do. You do. You do. You may think you don't know two times two, but you do. And I think you know two times two times two. I know, I do. But if you don't believe in yourself, that's okay. You can use your calculators, but you're gonna take these five numbers and square them, which means you're multiplying them against their cells, against themselves to put in this column. And then this column, you're multiplying it three times. So go ahead, take a minute to do that. Get your X and Y. So after you fill in your chart, you're going to go ahead and graph it out. So when we graph it, we only graph X and Y. So this is what we're going to graph. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my axis. Your graph is actually better than the graph that I'm using. So you scale it the way you think is appropriate for your notes. Cause I didn't realize that I had a different graph than what I put in your handout. This graph is stretched out. So like these are rectangles. They're not actual squares. So to remember to okay so because my lowest number is zero i don't need to i wouldn't put it in the middle like i'm not going to put it in the middle because i'm not using anything less than zero so that's why i'm moving my y-axis to the edge 
Okay, so I am going to, so because my y values, I need to go up to 8 and negative 8. I think I'm going to do this too. Okay, and now we know that because this is my, this is t equals negative 2, then this is t equals negative 1, you have to include some arrows on the actual graph to show the direction of motion. So I'm going to add a couple arrows just to show. And that would be my graph. But this says we have to graph and write the equation. So let's write our equation. So to write your equation, first you're going to take your x function and solve that for t. So when I take x and solve for t, I just get that t equals plus or minus the square root of x. It's actually pretty simple. Now, when you have a square root, you could also write that as a fractional exponent, which is x to the 1 half. So that's going back to first semester, if you don't know that. I just want to remind you that a square root means you have an exponent that is a fraction, or a radical means you have an exponent that is a fraction. So let's go ahead and substitute that in to my y equation. So y equals something to the power of 3. And because I'm raising it to the power of 3, I'm going to use plus or minus x to the 1 half. So I'm going to put that plus or minus x to the 1 half. So who remembers going back to algebra 1? What do you do with your exponents? Power to a power. What do you do with these two? Do you add, subtract, multiply, divide? What do you do? Multiply. What do you think 1 half times 3 is? 3 halves. Because you have 3 over 1 times 1 over 2, which is going to give you the equation y equals plus or minus x to the 3 halves. And this is going to inherit the domain because I have the square root of x. Well, the square root of x is not inheriting it. So this function has a square root because if you have a 2 in your denominator, that means you're taking the square root. And if I take the square root of a number, it has to be greater than or equal to 0. So the domain of this function 
is zero to infinity. So my domain is zero to infinity. And that is it.